Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. You can find us on Spotify, on Podbean, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, also on Dash Radio. Download the Dash Radio app and search for Nothing But Net. We're there every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We had over 30,000 views on our free agency show, over 30,000 views we thank you. Not bad for a little network, but we have stuff going all week long. Check out Lemon City Live every Tuesday and Friday. That's always a good time. Also, check out five reasonsports.com, five reasonsports.com. Spell it out for the latest from Brady Hawk, Juan Cardona, Louis Sung, and the other contributors on the Dolphins, the Heat, and all the other teams in town. And check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Everybody sort of knows which ones I like at this point. I like the strawberry lemonade gummies, strawberry lemonade gummies from Therapist Preferred. This is a CBD company founded in 2019 by a physical therapist to maximize performance and recovery for active people. 100% THC free and third party lab verified. So you will not fail a drug test. No problems there. And all the products are made in the U.S. with cutting edge technology. You can get the sports cream, the strawberry lemonade gummies, as I mentioned, the green apple gummies, the tincture and everything else on their site at therapistpreferred.com, therapistpreferred.com. The promo code is five reasons. That's the number five reasons. And you get 25% off your order. So enter that code five reasons at therapistpreferred.com. And did you know Sunday is national CBD day? And now today's episode. Down to this day. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop in one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to Five on the Floor. I am your host, Greg Sylvander. Today's floor plan does not include Ethan Skolnick nor Alex Toledo. We have um, an upgraded crew. Look at that. We are taking our roster. We are revamping the roster. This is a hard reset around uh, one of the franchise pillars uh, we, we have from the network, um, our uh, NBA insider extraordinaire, Adam Barai. And then we also have Ariel Atias. Am I saying that correctly? You did it. You got it. You're better than Ethan at that. So we're good. Boom. I'm off to a better start. Uh, the And Ariel's been killing it on full full court press and in, in many different spaces, we shall call them. Uh, in tonight's floor plan, we really just want to go over day two of free agency. We want to talk about the implications of DeMar DeRozan not coming to Miami, uh, the decisions around Kendrick Nunn, and then we'll get into a front court addition that was made later in the day in Markeith Morris. Uh, but with no further ado, let's dive directly into what I think Heat fans were most, I think, let down by as it relates to today. And that was that DeMar DeRozan is not coming to Miami. Um, he took the bag in Chicago. I think that once I saw the number, I understood a little bit more about why this was not even a, an, an issue. Um, but I, I guess, Adam, I'll, I'll go to you here first. What What is your takeaway from the DeMar situation? How close was Miami and um and just your general takeaways of him landing in Chicago of all places. I think the DeMar deal fell apart when the Spurs said no to Andre Iguodala. Uh, the Heat, I'm willing to bet, were considering picking up that option with Andre Iguodala and sending him to San Antonio. Uh, I know that Brian Windhorst reported that it was a possible sign and trade. I don't think that that was the case with Iguodala. I thought that I, I think that the Heat were considering just picking up the option straight up and sending it to San Antonio and saying, "Look, we'll take Demar for 15 million, and you can have KZ. You can have a protected first. You can have something, um, and you give us Demar." And when the Spurs said no, they have a better offer. It was clear that that was from Chicago. So I think that's when it fell apart. Um, I know a lot of Heat fans are really disappointed about that deal not happening. It was always a clucky fit, but you, they would have been really talented players um, with Jimmy, Kyle, and Bam all playing together. But again, the, the fit would have been clunky, uh, and uh, that would have been your team going forward. <laughs> 
You're right. They would have been locked into that core and there's positives and negatives to that. And you know what, like as much as I think, um, the DeMar DeRozan idea is intriguing and we could wax poetic about what that would mean. Um, I, I don't even want to spend too much more time thinking about that. Cause I think area where I think your head was immediately after the DeMar DeRozan news came was what the hell is going to happen next? Because there was a domino effect in that. And, um, and truthfully, it was a weird one. And I'm going to set the stage and I'd love to get your takeaways from it because this is like something that I don't think any of us saw coming in, in just the way that it happened. So first, uh, DeMar DeRozan is gone. We're wondering what Miami's going to do. They pull back. They rescind the qualifying offer on Kendrick Nunn. That's $4.7 million that he could have accepted at any moment and played for next season and been an unrestricted free agent going into 2022. The Heat didn't even give him that opportunity. They said, we don't want to pay you that. And moments later, uh, we hear that he went for essentially about that same amount of money to the Lakers on a two-year deal. Ariel, I'll start with you here. What was your reaction to Kendrick Nunn, the timing of it, um, the salary cap implications? I'm interested to hear like um, negative, positive. What was your net net from that uh, you know, move as he went to the, the arch rival NBA final competitor Lakers? So my immediate reaction was what on earth is going on, right? Because the heat controlled, I think you tweeted this out, the heat control the whole situation with regards to guys like Kendrick Nunn and the players uh, for whom not only that they hold bird rights for, but also, I mean, he was a restricted free agent. So the heat could have chosen to match that offer that the Lakers gave him. They could have had Kendrick Nunn back at a two year, $10 million deal. But uh, you know, seeing them rescind the offer, we're thinking, okay, what on earth is going on? It's one of one of two things. The first thing might be maybe that they're expecting to get him back at something less than the qualifying offer. And so they didn't want to risk allowing him to take that and eat more into, uh, you know, their financial situation, getting them closer to the hard cap. Um, and, and number two, just perhaps they're trying to get the cap hold off of their books because they're orchestrating some type of sign and trade or some type of deal and they need more space. I'm not really sure. Turns out that wasn't the case as of right now. We don't know that that might still not be the case, but as of right now, uh, seems like that's not what was going on there. They just, they had to have known that that Lakers offer was coming in and they had no intention of matching that uh, 5 million a year for a guy like Kendrick Nunn. I mean, he had a pretty good season last year, all things considered. That feels like a really good price point on a player of his caliber. And then when you consider the, the needs and the holes that still remain on this roster, they need a little bit more scoring punch, right? Like they've got, a you know, the way they've built their team, it feels very much like a team built in the Pat Riley image. Um, a lot of tough and gritty defenders, guys that'll get in your face and punch you in the mouth, uh, figuratively speaking, of course, but um, they need some scoring, right? Like, and some bench scoring for sure. So Kendrick Nunn at $5 million a year, that feels like a really good bargain for this team. Uh, just seems like it isn't something that they were interested in and they knew they weren't going to match the offer. So they let him go. Adam, you scoffed at this for a number of reasons and it had, I don't think it had anything to do. I won't speak for you too, too much here, but I don't think it had anything to do with you feeling like Kendrick Nunn had to be in Miami. You had other issues with it. And I'm interested to pick your brain. Like what did Miami not capitalize on in this scenario? What was the thinking from your perspective in rescinding that offer immediately letting him go? And, um, and we'll get into what followed uh, after the break, but I'm interested really to dig into this Kendrick Nunn situation from your perspective. You knew you were going to get Kyle Lowry months in advance. You, you just knew. You knew you had a good chance at getting Kyle. And that means you know that you're going to be up against the tax. That means you know you're probably not going to keep Kendrick. That means you should have traded him at the deadline. That's it. Yeah, that especially to let him walk. I can't. I'm not going to try to uh, put lipstick on the pig, as I've said recently in recent episodes like that. It stinks to lose him for nothing. I always felt like if and and the wheels are, are churning here, so maybe something will come up different and uh, the offseason is still incomplete. But I will say to see him walk out the door and get absolutely nothing in return and look at the bench and look at Max Struess and Gabe Vincent being your primary backcourt off of the bench. I know a hero is still involved, but we'll see how that shakes out. There are some question marks and we're going to get into those question marks. And one of the holes that was filled uh, after a word from one of our sponsors. 
We'll get back to our episode in a second, but before we do, I want to tell you about another great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that, of course, is prizepicks.com. You can still play even though the NBA season is over. They've got baseball. they got soccer. they still got some Olympic stuff up there, but also they've already got NFL Week 1. That's right, NFL Week 1. I took a look at it. Alvin Kamara over 65 and a half yards against Green Bay. I like it. I might change it by the time that it actually gets closer to the game, but there's no reason not to look at it now. Sign up. They got futures on there, all kinds of cool stuff. They're running promotions. Just spend like $20 there. Deposit $20 using the code 5, F-I-V-E. You'll get a bonus on top of it as you as long as you use that code and you can get going for the NBA season as well when that starts up. So go to prizepicks.com. But again, it's got to be the code F-I-V-E for five. And now back to the episode. Okay, Greg Solander back here on Five on the Floor. With me is Ariel Atias and Adam Barai. Hopefully, I really got them names off quick this time. And we're just going through day two of free agency. So um, I, I want to get right back to um, – so they have lots of holes, right? Like this, this roster is incomplete. I, I don't think – I love the Lowry edition, and I like P.J. Tucker, and um, those are heat culture plays for me all day. Y'all know I'm going to shout that from the rooftops. I also love that they get reti- retain Duncan. But let's not act like that's enough with as many players that just walked out the door to say that there's an absolute upgraded talent right now. There's holes in this roster. Ariel alluded to the to three-level scoring. Adam, I know you've talked about uh, you know big men and, and rebounding and, and all, the, all of the different things that have we've needed. We've talked about it all year. Uh, so they addressed one of those things, and I like this move, and that was uh, signing Markeith Morris to a one-year deal. Uh, from what I was able to dig into, I'm hearing veteran minimum. Adam, I don't know if you were able to confirm that since I tweeted it. Uh, I took it upon myself to just roll with it with the source that I did have, and um, I think that that's a great signing. I feel like he's a player that will uh, start games but maybe not finish them. Um, Ariel, what do you think of the fit there uh, before we go to Adam and talk about the ramifications from, from, uh, from a transactional perspective? Love the fit. I mean, I think the value in terms of getting a player like that, that might, like you alluded to, potentially start for you uh, on a veteran minimums contract. That's, that's a great, that's a great value. Um, I like what he brings to the team. He can shoot a little, he's not a great shooter, but I mean, he can hit the three. If you leave him open, uh, Heat fans will remember the 20, uh, 20 bubble finals where Bam Adebayo refused to leave him in the corner. So uh, he's at least to be respected out there. Uh, he's tough. He's got some size. He's not huge, but he's definitely got some size. I like the fit next to Bam. You can play him as uh, your starting four. You can bring him off the bench. Him and PJ Tucker can be interchangeable. Uh, more than anything, it just like I like I mentioned earlier, like this team feels like the most Pat Riley build type of team since the. The, the Timmy and the Zoe uh, builds, you know, 20 some years ago, like this team is tough. They're mean. They will get into your grill. They will not back down. And I think Heat fans are going to love them. I, I tweeted this earlier. I just think Heat fans are absolutely going to fall in love with this team. Um, I kind of like PJ Tucker as a starting four a little bit more, but I really do think it's interchangeable. I think it's one of those things where depending on the matchup, if you need to uh, go with a little bit more height, you, you need to be a little bit bigger than maybe uh, Markeith Morris is the guy. If, if, if the opposing big that you're going to have PJ checking is somebody that you feel comfortable having PJ guard up for, then maybe PJ starts. I don't think it really matters. I think they close games with whoever's playing better. Um, but I, I just love the makeup of this team. Like you'd mentioned, like they've got some dogs. I mean, Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Marquise Morris, P.J. Tucker, they are mean, and I think fans are going to love them. So I'm totally for this signing. I think it's a good one. Yo, you're talking 96, 97 Road Warriors. Talk dirty to me right now. Like, that's my era right there. But there's a question mark on whether uh, how much of that is going to work in today's NBA. Adam, I know you like the Marquise Morris pick. I I won't uh, divulge too much of our tech string, but I know you liked it. Uh, tell me what you think about that and um, the hole that it fills. And um, and then we're going to kind of pivot here uh, midstream. Uh, so as you get through that thought, what's next on the agenda for the Miami Heat? Well, to add to Ariel's point, they added three guys who have won a championship in the last three years. Kyle Lowry won two years ago. Markeith Morris a year ago. P.J. Tucker this year. So they've added champions. Um, it, it, this is completely a Pat Riley team. And we said that they needed to fill three different spots. They needed the point guard, they needed the scorer, and they need the complimentary big man next to Bam. They got the point guard in Kyle. They got the four in two different players, Markeef 
and PJ Tucker. So I think we can fill that for now for this year. Uh, it's definitely not a long-term option unless Marquise Moore shows out and plays well this year, but they filled that for now. We still are missing the scorer. Uh, I, I think there should be some hope that Tyler Hero can create some of that this year, uh, that Kyle Lowry can take some of the scoring load off of Jimmy and Bam. But the, the, the big-time volume score is still a missing piece to this team from contending. Uh, I, I don't think that they'll be able to fill it with the last two or three roster spots, but they should be able to get some depth. You know, there's still Danny Green, Wes Matthews. There's still guys that can defend and shoot at a high level out in the market if necessary. I know it's, it's 745 Eastern time uh, on Tuesday. So, I mean, anyone can go at any second, but there's still guys to be able to be had if the Heat really want them. It's true. And they're only three and a half. I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of that. Until we see the full numbers come in on August 6th, we need to make sure that we know this is all very preliminary, but we're essentially three and a half million from the luxury tax. It looks like Barry Jackson said today, the credible Barry Jackson said that the Miami heat are not looking to pay the tax, which made me get, um, riled up a little bit, uh, no pun intended. Ariel, like from your perspective, does it bother you if the tax is the primary, um, thing that gets in the way from them because like when I saw this thing happen with Kendrick Nunn today I'm thinking okay no they're going to take a swing at a sign and trade that's going to take them into the tax and who cares about what happens with Kendrick Nunn but if that doesn't happen and they just fill out this roster with let's say one biannual signing or all vet minimum signings is that enough and is the luxury tax concerns something that you think the fan base is going to start screaming about louder if they don't add around Jimmy Bam and Kyle immediately They've already started screaming about it, right? Like when I saw that from Barry as well, I mean, I, I, I was, I had a similar reaction. It's one of those things where once you go, you know, you go out and you get a Kyle Lowry, you get a PJ Tucker, you're loading up and you're going all in on this build. You want to get to the finals this coming season, right? This is not about the future. There'll be another build with Bam. We talked about that, but this is about this season. And if you're bringing in a, those guys, the veterans that you're bringing in, you almost have to be resigned. It feels like to paying the tax. Like there's no, like, how can you not, how can that not be part of the plan here? So absolutely. If that is true. And I, and I fully like, I trust Barry's reporting. We know how credible we know how good Barry is. Um, the, the, that it's kind of, it's a little bit asinine if we're being completely honest here. Um, I don't know if, you know, Adam had made a good point that it's, it doesn't feel like they're going to be able to fill the void of the, the scoring punch that it feels like this team is missing through uh, whatever's remaining on the market and using, you know, minimums and maybe the biannual exception if you can just stay under that tax line. But it kind of feels like you have to go over it. Now, will they? I don't know, but they, it, it absolutely feels like they should. And if they don't and this team comes out next season, then they're going to be a great defensive team. There's no there's no doubt about it. Like it's almost impossible with the personnel that they have and the head coach that they have, that they won't have a great defensive system in place and that they won't uh, be a phenomenal defensive team. But if they're not able to score enough points, you know, it's going to put a little bit of a limit on what their ceiling really is. So um, it's going to be tricky. I do think fans will start getting a little bit frustrated if that is how it plays out. I'm hopeful that it won't, but if that's where we're going, uh, I think fans will have a right to be a little bit upset. Let's not get this switched up. They had a phenomenal offseason. They added P.J. Tucker, Markeith Morris, and Kyle Lowry. If we went into the offseason saying this is all they're going to get, all of us would have said it's an A-plus offseason, and it still is. Uh, it's just we're not at the status yet of calling ourselves true contenders. The team still needs to be molded. Uh, and I think the problem for me is – why didn't you keep Kendrick Nunn? This is my question. Why didn't you keep Kendrick Nunn for five million just to have him so that you can flip him for later? Uh, this is this is a salary, a contract that you could use for later. We know that this team's not finished. Uh, we know that the minimums aren't going to cut it. So we're going to look for external help in the future. Why didn't you keep Kendrick as salary filler? And now, if this team does poorly, I'm not saying they will. I actually think they're going to be the two three seed. But if this team starts out poorly, you'll have every Heat fan in South Florida cobbling together a Duncan Robinson and P.J. Tucker package to try to get any scorer from outside. Yeah. 
It's a good point. And like Tyler, now the onus is on him to do things that I think maybe we were all resigned to him going elsewhere. And now, like, as you look at the roster, they need Tyler hero skill set off the bench. Like that is an irreplaceable thing right now. Um, and, you know, I kind of expected them to look elsewhere and they may still have some bigger stuff in the works. It's very early. Let, let's, that, that's, that's totally um, still viable. But Adam, I mean, you, br- you bring up really good points across the board about, um, that I, I just don't know that they're going to be able to say with, with the resources that they have now that this team can, can, and they're just not spending to the level of Brooklyn. So it's like, there's a certain level money. of it. You look at it and it's like, how can you compete? And a lot of that has to do with, you got to get tricky with signing trades. And to your point, I don't know that they've maximized every single asset. I know that a guy on a qualifying offer as a restricted free agent, if he accepts that offer, he does have a no trade kind of situation with his contract, but there's ways of getting around that if he knows he's getting the bag elsewhere. So to your point, it, it has not been maximized, but if they've got something cooking here that will add one more piece, because I feel like they're, they're one um, let's say top seven player added to this mix that we feel strongly about from saying, okay, like now they can contend. And I just feel like it's, it's, it's a race to see if they can actually add that now. And the Kendrick Nunn thing, we, I might be speaking prematurely here. If they end up making a sign and trade somewhere else for someone else using a Godala or Depot, then it makes a lot of sense why they didn't extend the qualifying offer to Kendrick. So I'm just assuming right now that they're not making that secondary move, but if they do fantastic move. Yeah. So we shall see what happens. It is early in free agency. Thank you both for joining me as the, the rest of the crew is out. Uh, we will be back with the regular crew, but we're, we're going to be mixing in everyone from the network as free agency goes. So we'll have you covered here with everything that goes on with the Miami heat. Thanks. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network.